So you came to this video because you're hearing multiple things. Your parents are telling you, go to school, do good in school. Then these rich red pillars are telling you, no, school's bad. School's going to make you broke, yada, yada, yada. So I've heard so many people say that school's a scam and you don't need school to get rich and you don't need to care about school to have a good life, stuff like that. And they're right, there are a lot of issues with the educational system, but we can't fix that. What we can do is know how to make the best out of our time at school and actually find the advantages that it could have if we focus on these specific categories. If you choose to select out the things I am about to tell you from school, then you could quite literally change the trajectory of your future and nobody else is doing this nobody else is talking about this so you will be unique and you will have a unique advantage to give you a better clearer understanding on why we are choosing these things let's go through some history of the great thinkers to help us know what is actually useful first let's talk about socrates he did not actually go to school. He learned from commonly spread knowledge, commonly spread texts, and then he also learned through asking everybody questions. He questioned all the beliefs that people had. He was the foundation of the people who started the school system. Two people named Plato and Zeno, the one who started the first university and the one who started the Stoicism system. So what did Plato do? Plato spent his time on two things. One, he wrote philosophical texts, and two, he taught at his school. He founded the Platonic school. Plato wrote 25 texts and spent a majority of his life consuming information. Now he founded the Platonic Academy. Now what exactly was special about the Platonic Academy? It taught average things such as math and language arts that we still have today. They promoted you challenging their beliefs. What they would promote is to have you learn a topic fully, fully comprehend it, and then articulate an argument against it. Pay attention to this system because this is sort of the idea we want to implement in our brains to help us articulate arguments. Then was Aristotle. Aristotle was one of the students of the Platonic Academy. Aristotle's main achievement was founding the idea of a tree of information. So basically, when you want to consider a thought and order with things in amount of importance, you could have a tree. Trees branch out in different directions, but overall, they are at a different height. So you can see which topic you should focus on. So for example, whether you should focus on your business or school, you use his type of tree to make that decision. Now we're on to the main person in this group of people I'm giving you. This is Zeno. Zeno was the founder of Stoicism. One of those philosophers was Crates, who went to Platonic school. When he was 42, he founded Stoic school. Stoic school was known to be the big school in the area. All the rich people would send their kids to Stoic school, Many Roman emperors would go to Stoic school despite it being in Greece. Stoic school was a big deal at the time. So what exactly made it special and so powerful that everybody wanted to get in? What was special about it was it was a specific philosophy that the school was teaching. Rather than teaching information, the school taught the people going to it how to think. It had three core foundations that it taught. Ethics logic, and physics. Ethics was what you believed was good or believed was the best outcome. Some examples are money, time, family, woman, stuff like that. Logic was your ability to formulate ideas and think of how you could achieve that desired and specific outcome. The best idea is or the best example is entrepreneurship. And finally, the idea of physics at the time was how you actually implement it into the world. So some examples now of this idea are trading, implementing a product in a market, and what type of education or degree you choose to get. Now we move on to the last individual. The last individual in this tree that I'm bringing up is Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was a great emperor of Rome. 
Rather than getting normal information from the best people in Rome, he learned from Greek philosophers. This was because Greek philosophers were known to articulate such powerful abilities in your mind and developing crazy amounts of knowledge compared to other systems. He even wrote in Greek because at the time it was thought that Greek enhances your ability to articulate powerful and meaningful thoughts. Now most people know and say that IQ is a big factor in your ability to generate thoughts, how, what speed you're actually able to generate thoughts in your head, and how quickly you could come up with responses and stuff, but there's a second factor to this equation. The second factor is fluency, and this determines your ability to produce knowledge. A combination of IQ and fluency is what will make you think and process faster. All of the people I mentioned had one core thing in common. It was the idea of improving your ability to articulate thoughts. And this is done through improving your fluency and your understanding. Different individuals have different abilities to articulate thoughts at different speeds. We all know that. But what is most important for this is the rate that your brain processes. The best speakers are the most convincing and the most powerful with their words because they generate a range of things to select from in their mind. When you're talking and thinking, you haven't trained this ability, so you may only have one sentence processed in your mind. But as you increase your fluency, your mind's going to start thinking of several responses. You have a range of, say, seven responses, for example. You could select the best one, and because you have that ability, you could articulate a sentence for that best response that will convince the person to either listen to you or whatever you are aiming for. And it's found that people who generate less of these thoughts are much less articulate, struggle in speaking, struggle in convincing people stuff, and ultimately that leads to struggling in life. You could also think of this as a copy and paste system for the creativity in responses and how unique your point of view is. Because somebody who is less fluent, lower IQ, and ultimately has a lower articulating ability is going to have less options other than the normal response. For example, if somebody asks how your day was, the normal response is, oh, good, whatever. But somebody may either generate only the response of good, and some other people are going to generate in their head seven other th thoughts, even if their response is still good. You still have an option to choose other things. So we know IQ is one thing, but fluency is the other factor. You could think of it like a game. You may start off with a lower amount of skill points or a lower IQ in articulating thoughts, but through practicing fluency, you could surpass all these people who have a higher IQ or who have practiced fluency more than you. So by investing these skill points in the category of fluency, you can improve your brain's ability to articulate thoughts. Ultimately, your goal is to be able to articulate so fast from practicing this skill so much that it's no longer your brain's speed that's holding you back, but it's the amount of information you have. So you could continue consuming, consuming, consuming information, and you're going to always have it ready to present. Through using this idea, we can use school to train our ability to articulate thoughts and make us a weapon in this world. First, I want to say you may not like this tip because it is telling you to do the harder parts, but if you truly are serious and genuinely want to be part of the top 1%, then you need to listen to these hard things, these difficult things, or normally your weaknesses because you do not practice them. So this first idea is to work on the harder parts of language arts. The smaller assignments don't matter. We want to discuss the writing side first. Writing is important because it slows you down. It gives you the ability to think slowly, think of the best way to word or articulate a sentence properly, to make it most convincing as possible and make it most as meaningful as possible. This is best done through long assignments, long writings. So when you get say a five plus page paper, this is when you really want to sit down and grind at this. 
I recommend doing it all at once, even though people advise against that. I mean, why not train your attention span? Why not train your ability to do deep work while you are getting this done? And then I understand this whole idea of getting your paper reviewed by some classmate, let, let them correct your paper. That's all bullshit. I, that's just the teachers being lazy. I don't know why the teachers don't correct it. You're not going to learn from somebody who's, I'm just going to say it, not as smart as you. If you're watching this video, you probably already understand the topics in class more than those around you. What I do recommend is trying to find a time with your teacher, trying to find a time where you could really force and push on your teacher to reword, to say the best ways to present these sentences more coherently to make people understand. And by doing this, you'll train your ability. And then to actually implement this, you could go home and practice what you learn on your business. So say you copyright, practice a piece of copy using whatever your teacher fixes. Really implement this into your brain. If you you make videos, practice this scripting. You could even practice this journaling if you don't have any sort of business. I recommend practicing it while journaling anyways. Journaling is a great habit to do every night because this is reinforcing this idea of practicing the way you present your thoughts. Now that you understand how to present your words and what words to present, you need to actually develop the ability to think of this and to process this at a higher speed. And this is where reading comes in. So whenever you get assigned a reading, what I want you to do is actually read it as fast as possible. But what you're gonna do is read through one paragraph as fast as possible. At the end of each paragraph, spend two to three seconds in your head recapping the paragraph. If you can't recap it in your head, that means you can't process that information fast enough. Go, th go and read it as quick as you can again. And it, this is gonna be very frustrating at first, when you finish it and you realize, wait, I didn't even retain a single word I just read. Did I, how did I just do that? And it's gonna be frustrating at first, but you're gonna actively notice by the end of the paper, you're gonna be making much less mistakes when you're reading super quickly, and you're gonna actually retain what you read. And what this means is your brain is processing thoughts and words faster, so now you can process the words needed to present in your argument even quicker. Now that you've learned what to present and how to present it at a high speed, we need to actually practice this in our active life. And I have three options for you to choose from on how you want to practice this. The first option is to record videos like I do and keep the camera rolling the entire time. This is gonna force you to constantly be thinking what you need to be doing next ahead of time. The second option is to start controversial debates at school or at lunch. And the third option is to start controversial debates at work. Be careful with this one though. <laughs> this is my personal favorite for a long time and it could stir up some trouble, let's say that. Keep in mind that after this, your bosses and coworkers will either respect you more or extremely dislike you after you do this. The goal is actually to offend people. Now, let me explain why real quick. It's not through what you are saying, it's through your wording. This forces you to articulate a response quick because when people get offended, they start attacking you back. And when you get attacked, you are forced to think on the spot. When you're forced to think quickly, you'll learn what your issue is. You'd either learn that you spit out some random words and you need to go back to the drawing board, spend more time analyzing your words through writing, or you'd learn that you really can't go hear in those things quick enough and you have logic gaps or whatever. So that means you need to improve your reading speed or your speed of comprehension. Let me give you an example of how you could word a sentence so that you could actually offend people without actually disrespecting or doing any harm. So in this example, what you are trying to say is that a population collapse 
will lead to the downfall of mankind. And you have two options in presenting that off of some information you recently learned. You could either say, hey, I think females entering the workforce is a bad thing because it significantly decreases their chance of having children and the amount of children they do have. So that's going to lead to a decline in population. Or you could say that woman entering the workforce is the worst thing for mankind and it needs urgent attention. You see the difference? One side is going to draw out a much more emotional response where they are attacking you and very quick to respond where you don't have much time to think and the other one is going to start just a conversation, a normal conversation where you could pause, you could hesitate, you could just discuss the topic. You're also practicing how to articulate your sentence so you could use this in your everyday life. When you draw emotional responses out of people, it's much easier to counter their arguments with logic because they normally don't actually believe what they are saying if you word it correctly. Before I get to my next point, let me real quick say, please go ahead and do whatever for the algorithm, subscribe, help this channel grow so I could get higher quality videos out to you guys. I want to give you the best quality possible. Now there's another thing we want to discuss. It's IQ and analysis, sort of the physics side of the stoicism system. So IQ and analysis determines your ability to hold on to things. This is simply done through mathematics. What mathematics does is it trains your ability to select specific bits of information. That's why math directly correlates to your ability to solve puzzles because you could picture specific bits of information in your head. You could almost give yourself a photographic memory without actually having one through training mathematics a lot. This will also increase your neuroplasticity. What neuroplasticity is going to do is it's going to increase your ability to bring in new information and let go of new in, of old information. It's going to increase your ability to adapt to new situations. And the person who could adapt to a new situation is always going to do better than the person who can't. If you're outreaching, to say, 15 clients a day and you could notice the issues and what's what's causing people to not respond, then you're going to be much more likely to get new responses if you could adjust your system and update it based off that information. Let's real quick recap all the information so you can make sure you're using everything. I recommend you take notes on this section and note down everything I list. First is that people claim that school is useless but that's because they think going to school is solely for information rather than being there to develop your brain. You need to focus on long, difficult writings. This will improve your ability to articulate coherence. You need to focus on long readings. This will increase the speed you articulate your thoughts. And third, you need to focus on mathematics. This will allow you to adapt and retain any needed information. You should put this before all else. You don't even need to care about anything else. If you solely focus on that, this is gonna put you at a huge disadvantage. Like who actually cares about cell biology, let's be honest. Oh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Mm. Think about this. School was originally a luxury and this was because it helps develop your brain at a rapid rate. You have to go to school, why not make the most of it? If you follow this guide and take it to heart, you're gonna be doing something that not even 1% of people are doing. You're actually trying to develop your brain with school. So if you do this, you will graduate with a true advantage. Good luck, keep it up.